Hello, this is Pastor Dave from Harvest Christian Ministries International. We are so excited that you decided to join us on our YouTube channel. We ask that you would give us a thumbs up, that you would share, that you would like, and that you would also subscribe. And remember, please hit that notification bell. That way you're notified every single time that we upload our videos. We ask that this ministry is being a blessing to you, that you will partner with us financially so that we can continue to promote the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We look forward to seeing you soon. And remember that the harvest is truly ripe. Then Moses gave an order, and they sent this word throughout the camp. No man is to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. And so the people were restrained from bringing more because they because what they already had was more than enough to do the work. Now, I'll tell you why that's, that's such an interesting scripture. Do you know how many churches would love to be able to tell the people, look, don't, don't worry about bringing nothing. We don't, we don't need no funds. We don't, we, we've done that. We will. Understand something. Every time you are given, and let me, before I even go into it, let me start this by saying thank you. We, we are so thankful to everyone that gives, to everyone that sows, those that are here and those that are watching. We are so excited and so thankful that though you, you are sowing into making the vision of God a reality. There's so many things that we want to do and continue to do for the church and for the body. And we can't do it if people aren't sowing, if people aren't giving. We can't just do what the word of God needs to be, what the word says that we're to do. So when I read scripture like this, it excites me because if I can read it there, I can expect us to be like that. I can expect that we can have a party or a function and nobody has to pay a mega amount of money because the church can help fund stuff. We can have an outing, we can have an event, and the church can help fund stuff. Church can't do that if people aren't, aren't tithing and sowing. Does that make sense? So we need everyone to be able, because all you're doing is supporting your church, your support. And trust me when I say, Pastor David and I go to extreme measures to make sure we're going to God. We take this personal. We really take this personal. We go to God daily on your behalf. Oh, and don't let us know you got an issue. Oh, don't, don't, don't let it be known. Don't let me know that you have an issue because some fervent prayer is being done on your behalf. And when I tell you I'll be holding that thing serious, me and God be having a fight. I be in there battling with the angel. It's like, no, they said, and it didn't see manifestation. Oh, we got a problem. So, Daddy, these are people, these are your children. Y'all not our kids. We, we spiritually, you're our kids, but you're Daddy's people. So, if you're Daddy's people and he can do anything but fail, what do we not expect? I don't know about y'all, but I expect the world. I'm a daddy's girl, so I expect when I tap in, yo, I, I, this, isn't, this isn't fixed. Yo, this is still happening like this. That's what I expect to take place. So when daddy gives me an order, when he gives me a command, when he lines it up with what I have to do in order for me to get to this result, I'm going to follow through with it. And I want all of you all to reap the, reap the same benefits of what Jesus has said is already out. we got 66 books of promises that are available to us. If you don't participate, you don't get it. They always say a closed mouth can't get fed. That's the same thing with the word of God. If you're not participating in what daddy is telling you to do, it's an exchange system. It's God, it ain't, it ain't best girl. It's God, it's an exchange system. You can't outgive him and you can't outdo him. And I assure you, each and every time you sacrifice your hind pots and come up in here on Sunday, God takes notice that you got angels that are noticing each of you that are here this morning. Angels that are noticing, they taking note. What did, what, what's on their heart? What's, what's in their mind? They're taking notice of you because you have sacrificed your time. You have sacrificed yourself to God. And he we just come giving you all praise and glory and honor. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing the harvest to be had here in Harvest Christian Ministries International. We thank you, Lord God, for every seed that is sown. We thank you, Lord God, for the heart to even want to sow. I thank you, Daddy, for each and every person that's here, that's taken up their, their whatever they have to sow into the body. I thank you for allowing them to give. I thank you, Lord God, and ask that you bless the households here, bless their families, bless their finances. Bless their increase. Bless their heart's desire because their heart's desire is what you've already placed within them. So I just pray right now, Lord God, that you would increase them in such a way that they would want to run and to give to you, Father. We love you. We love you with such a love, Lord God. And we just honor and, pray. we honor and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray.
And what I mean by considered is that there are world events that are going on and we, the body of Christ, we have to have an active part in what's going on in the world. And the scriptures does say that the prayers of the righteous, they availeth much and is powerful. And what's going on in the world today, in Ukraine, for instance, and its invasion by Russia, you know, we have a responsibility as a church, as the body of Christ, to pray for those who are being oppressed, those who are being invaded. They're, they're thousands and thousands, millions of people that, that are there whose lives are in the balance, all because of one person or one nation that's coming against them. You know, one may be able to say, you know, we can open the Bible and we can see where we are in the Bible. Um, and that's true. But Jesus did say, he said, there will be wars and rumors of wars. And he says, be not troubled. Yeah. Be not troubled. Our Redeemer, he lives. Amen? And so I want to just pray and take into consideration um, for those that are in Ukraine. And I know that those that are among us here that that you know how to pray and you know how to intercede. So Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we come to you this morning on behalf of those that are in the Ukraine and those that are at war. And Father, we're not going to fret. We're not going to cave in. We're not going to quit. But we, the United States of America, we stand in proxy for the Ukraine right now, for every person that's in that state, in that country. And especially, Lord God, for the Christians and the believers and those who will come to know you as Savior. That, Lord, that they will look to the hills from what cometh their help, that their help will come from you, God. And for that, Lord God, we give you praise and much thanksgiving. And we declare it so in Jesus' name. And all the church say amen. 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 Praise God. You may be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. In times like these, we need an anchor. In times like these, we need an anchor. Be very sure. Be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid, solid rock in times like these. We need. A revival in times like these. We need a revival. Be very sure. Be very sure. Your anger holds. Solid, solid rock. That rock is Jesus. He's the one. That rock is Jesus. He's the only one. Be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid, 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 the solid rock. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. In times like these, we, child of God, need a Savior. Hallelujah. You know, the Lord has, has pressed upon my heart this morning in this wise that there are so many people who are going through and dealing with mental issues, dealing with suicidal thoughts and dealing with depression and, and all these types of thoughts that are not from God. Listen, child of God, when thoughts come upon you that, that deals with things that are detrimental to your health, that is not of God. We are the healed protecting our health. Sure, say amen. 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 And in Psalms chapter 37, and I'm not teaching you, but in Psalms chapter 37, the scripture says that when the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all of their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. I come against suicide. I come against depression. I come against yeah. mental illness in the, in the name of Jesus. Devil, you are a defeated foe and that you have nothing on the people of God. I don't know about you, but I have friends, I have family members who are dealing with mental issues, dealing with depression, dealing with oppression, dealing with suicidal thoughts that are not of God. We've got to take authority over these thoughts that are coming into our minds and into the minds of our children and the minds of our family members. And we're not going to have, we're not going to stand for it any longer. It's time for us to stop playing patty cake with these mental issues that we're dealing with. Amen. I, I'm, I'm a little passionate this morning. Because God's people should not be going through this kind of trouble. It's the enemy that's coming against us. Let this mind be in you. Which is also in Christ Jesus. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, he says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And Jesus says, I will. He says, I will. Somebody say, he will. He says, I will give you rest. He said he will give us rest for our souls. Remember, our souls is our mind, our will, and our emotions, our thinker, our chooser, and our feeler. It is the will of God for you to walk in total health. The scripture declares that we are wonderfully and fearfully made. I want to see us all walk in our health. I want to see us all walk in our wealth. I want us to walk in all of the great soteria that God has set aside for us. So yes, I'm passionate this morning. Because I refuse to allow the enemy to have a hold on our lives. And we've got to take it back. We've got to take it back. What are we thinking? What are we saying? You can control what comes out of your mouth. You may not be able to control the thoughts that come into your head, but what comes out of your mouth, you control. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's go and pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, it is your servant. It is the one whom you've called for this time and this space and to be in the earth for such a time as this. For Harvest Christian Ministries International here in Davenport, Florida. And for those that are underneath the sound of my voice and those that are, are able to plug in today. Hear our prayer this morning. We've been stepping into this newness. We pray, Father, that you will open our eyes that we may see, that you will open our ears that we may hear. Dear Lord Jesus, give us a heart to be able to understand what we believe Holy Spirit is saying to the church today. And for that, we give you praise and much thanksgiving. And all the church say amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I pray that you are blessed this morning by the, the praying and the teaching that we would, would, would put forth in the earth today. You, child of God, are a force to be reckoned with. I want you to understand who you are in Christ. In advance, before I teach anything, I want you to know who you are in him. You, child of God, are a force to be reckoned with. Say that with me. I am, I am. 
a force to be reckoned with. Glory to God. Again, I'm a little passionate this morning. A little on edge. Anybody ever feel like you're on edge, ready for a fight? You ever have one of them days like, come on, man, today, today, not today. Today ain't today because I feel like fighting today. I feel like fighting today. And I say that because when God places something on the inside of you that, that you want to be able to give back to the people what God has given you, you want to see them prosperous. Amen. Amen. It's time for our finances to line up. It's time for our bodies to line up. Yeah. It's time for our mind to line up. Yeah. It's time for our spirit to line up. Hallelujah. We've been teaching here of late about being reconciled. Pastor Kelly has been teaching about the purposeful life, but it's all under the preview of stepping into this newness. We're about to step into the third month of the year. And I have said in times past that I don't want to wait to mid-year. I don't want to wait to November or December to be see, to see the things that God has assigned for me. If it's early on in the year, I want it now. That's right. Glory to God. Because there are some things last year that I was waiting on. Huh? Glory to God. Turn and open your Bibles up to Isaiah chapter 43 to still our springboard scripture. And Isaiah chapter 43, in verse 19, the scripture says, Behold, this is God talking, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth, do you not perceive and know it? And will you not give heed to it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Now, again, this is God had this conversation with the prophet Isaiah. And this conversation that God had with Isaiah, that God, what he was doing is that he was showing him, teaching him, showing him what was to come to pass. Is that all right? And so what I've noticed here is that it was over 700 years before the Lord Jesus came onto the scene. Because whom Jesus, whom God is talking about here in Isaiah chapter 43, this new thing that he's talking about, he's talking about the coming of the Savior. He's talking about the coming of the Messiah. But there was well over 700 years before Jesus came on the scene. But in the eyes of God, it was already done. Before the foundations of the world were brought forth, uh, it was already done. And, and what the scripture here says is that we must proceed. Somebody say proceed. Proceed. You know, I want to try something. Everyone, where you are right now, I want you to close your left eye. And I want to take your thumb, take your thumb and put your thumb right here on the bottom of my chin, right there, just like that. With your left eye closed, just like that, right? Left eye closed with your thumb right here on my chin, got it? All right? Now, what I want you to do is close your right eye and open your left eye. Did anything change? Ah, something changed. Now, I want you to close your left eye and open your right eye. Then it go back to the same. Now what I want you to do is open both eyes. Both eyes. Everybody see that? What I'm trying to show you, and those in the military already understood this, what was going on here. What I'm trying to show you here is perception. He says perceive. When you had your thumb up and you put your thumb right here on my chin, in that aspect, you were able to see me clearly. When you close your other eye, for most of us, when you close your other eye and open the other eye, it's shifted. That was your perspective. God's perspective was when you was dead on. When, you had, when I had you to open both eyes, now you're seeing your perspective and God's perspective. But he wants you to see it clearly. When you shut off one side of your vision, or when you close one eye, you can't see the other side. You're cutting off your ability to see holy. My military folks here understand that when you get to shooting, you want to be able to shoot with both eyes open. Because on the field in the military, you cannot afford to have one eye closed. You're cutting off your field of view. So we learn how to shoot. I said I'm in a fighting mood today. All right. You learn how to shoot with both eyes open. So what happened here is that your whole, if it's 180 degrees, you catch all of that. But if one eye is closed, you're cutting off. 90 degrees. And God says, I need for you to perceive what I am doing. You know, uh, 
this this picture that we're painting, and then I'm, and okay, so it's over seven hundred years before Jesus came on the scene. Somebody's perception is off, because when God told Isaiah, I'm sure Isaiah thought, "Hey, this is going to happen anytime soon." But perception is everything. Say that perception, perception. is everything. Perception. You know, the scripture says that one day is like unto a thousand years with God. All right, and so somebody's perception is off, and guess whose perception is not off? God's perception is exactly right. Again, we have to get onto the same page with God. That you follow. And so, uh, in the special theory of relativity, Albert Einstein figured out that time is relative. In other words, the rate in which time passes depends on your frame of reference. Well, our reference is before time, or in other words, in eternity's past. And I've, I've made this statement a few times, and I will continue to say it because it's always prevalent in my life, that manifestation is when earth comes into an alignment with what heaven has already declared. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the Pastor Dave saying. You can, you can write that down. Just put my name beside it. But many of us, we're waiting on God when God has already declared it. God has already seen it to completion. That the deal was already done before time began. Uh, but well, well, Pastor David, when, when, was, when was that? Well, let me just do this. Instead of me saying it, let me allow the word of God to speak for itself. That before the foundations of the world were brought forth, that God's plan of redemption came by way of Jesus Christ. When you turn to John chapter 1, and I'll read it for your, your understanding in verses 1 through 4, the scripture declares, John said this, if he, had to, if he was in a court of law, if John was called to the witness stand, John would say that in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Well, Paul, what do you have to say? Paul, if Paul took the witness stand, Paul will tell you that in Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 through 17, that he, talking about Jesus, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. Hebrew writer puts it this way in verse, uh, chapter 1, uh, verses 1 and 2, God. Yes, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. Glory to God. And here in John, John, if John were to take the, the, take the, the, the stand, John will tell you. Again, John will say here in chapter 17, and look at verse 5. And when John had this prayer, he was talking with God. He said, and now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Is that a good testimony? Uh, yeah, yeah, God has planned everything out. He's God. All-knowing, omniscient God. Nothing happens by accident. Nothing happens unbeknownst to Almighty God. Ever. He's already reconciled you and I unto himself. Listen, child of God, listen. We are the manifestation of heaven's desire. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Heaven had this desire that you and I would be right here, right now, in this time of frame. That, that and, and I say this quite a bit, that if God, as powerful and as knowledgeable as he is, if he didn't know that all of us individually would be here right now, at 10.04 a.m. in the morning, if he didn't know that we'll be here right here, right now in the earth, I don't need him. I say that boldly. I don't need God if he didn't know that. But he did know. But he did know. I say 10.04 is 11.04. Glory to God. Amen. 
So here we are, here you and I, we're crying about when, God. How long, God, before what I've been seeking you about? How long will it be the things that I've been praying about? How long, God, will it be before they begin to manifest? There are things that God has manifested in your life and mine that we forgot to even thank him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I begin to look back over my life and I think about the things that I, there were some things that were going on in my life and I began to pray to God about it and, and I just began to, kept, I kept speaking, I kept praying, I kept saying it over and over. And Pastor Carol told us earlier about how when, when God heard us the first time, but it's something about what, when we begin to turn the word of God over and over in our lives, that I began to just say this thing over and over again. And, and you know what? One day it happened. The very thing I've been praying to God about, the thing that it seemed like it was never going to happen, it kept getting delayed, it kept getting pushed back, and then it happened. It manifested. You, child of God, are the manifestation of heaven's desire. You are not here by accident, but you are here on purpose. I want you to understand that you are a force to be reckoned with in the earth. When you walk into a room, good God from glory, when you walk into a room, God walks into the room. When you become part of a conversation, God becomes part of the conversation. Know who you are in him. That when you step into a room, heaven's presence ought to show up. Glory to God. That's the power. That's the authority that you have in God. Now proceed. Glory to God. And you might say, well, well, well Pastor Dave, I, I, I don't know about all of that. I, I don't know about all of this, what you're talking about. Listen, my failures and your failures have already been factored and equated into God's plan of reconciliation. I'll say that again. My failures and your failures have already been factored and equated into God's plan of reconciliation. Therefore, we can trust God. When you recognize that he's already made this equation of when I would mess up, he's already factored that in. Listen, child of God, I'll say this. A key to my manifestation and your manifestation is my and your perception and our trust in God. Well, that's powerful. God has already reconciled us. It's just that many of us don't believe that. Many of us that are in the body of Christ, we, we, we are in these challenging times. And, 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 it, and it, it can't be that simple, Pastor Dave, but it is that simple. You know, it's, it's folk like me, preachers of the gospel that we're the ones that are complicating this thing when the gospel is simple. And I would say to, to my pastors and friends and those in the ministry, stop complicating the gospel. It's simple enough. It is. Our part is the believing part. I mean, now, Pastor Dave, are we mere pawns in God's chessboard of light? Well, I'll tell you what, he ain't playing checkers. Look, look let me be a pawn. Let me be a rook. Let me be a knight. I'll be whatever piece on the board that he wants me to be. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, as long as I'm in the game. Glory to God. Open your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Again, this is Paul, the writer. And Paul, I, I love Paul, the ministry that Paul had because he had such a passion and a zeal for God. And when he understood his assignment that the gospel was to be preached to the Gentiles, then his life began to prosper. His life began to line up with what God desired. Because Paul, if you recall, he wanted to bring the gospel to his people. He wanted to bring this God's plan of salvation and, and uh, of being and get people born again and coming to the kingdom to the Jews. But that wasn't God's plan at the time. God's plan at the time is for you and I, the Gentile world. And so Paul says here in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Look at verse 17 through 19. And the scripture says, Therefore, if any man be where in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to who? Himself. How? By Christ Jesus. And have given to us, that's you and I, the ministry of of reconciliation. Well, Pastor Dave, you keep talking about reconciliation. Well, good. I'm going to keep on talking about reconciliation. Why? Until it gets into our inner man. 
I want you to understand the authority. I want you to understand the assignment. Verse 19, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Again, Paul was no stranger to this, this train of thought. Because if anybody understood this concept, it was the Apostle Paul. Remember the life that Paul lived before he became Paul. But when he was saw that, that although he had this zeal and this drive, but he thought he was doing right. He thought he was doing right. He had people being put to death. He thought he was doing right in the eyes of God. Until he had a come to Jesus moment. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But Paul says, he says, remember not the former restrictions. Because they could not keep the restrictions wholeheartedly. But Jesus, he is the fulfillment of the law. He's a fulfillment of the old covenant. See, there was none that was righteous in the earth to fulfill that assignment, so God sent himself in the form of his son. Look at Matthew. Turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, and look at verse 17 through 18. And the scripture says, this is Jesus talking. He says, think not that I am coming to, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and soul, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall, not, no, shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Jesus fulfilled all the Jewish ceremonial laws to abrogate and repeal the law that every messianic prophecy was fulfilled in Christ. Wrapped up in these two concepts. Our reconcilement is hung here. Our assignment is located right here. That this way of thinking and doing and loving God with everything that we have. Loving our neighbor as ourselves and getting them to know God. Partnership with God's plan of redemption but, but, but Pastor Dave, what, what allows me to qualify? What, what, how do I qualify? What right do I have to have a partnership with God? You, you don't know what I've done. You don't know where I've been. You don't know the, the, the atrocities. You don't know the sins. You don't know the complications that I have in my life. Therefore, I, I cannot walk in this authority. I can't walk in this reconciliation. I can't do any of these things, Pastor Dave. Well, that's the problem. They're no longer yours. Again, God has already factored in. God has already equated your failure and mine in his complete plan of reconciliation. So this sin issue that we have, or this, this issue of not being able to let things go, it's already done. we got to see it as already finished. We have to begin, again, perception. We have to see things as God sees them. See, we are partners with God in his perfect plan of humanity. He's carrying the weight of the whole matter. We are partnered with God, and there's nothing to disqualify you but unbelief. Glory to God. Turn to Matthew chapter 11. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30, Jesus, and I, I, can, I can hear him say this so calmly, he says, come unto me. All ye that labor in a heavy labor, and I will give you rest. Take my, my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Whatever it is that's holding you down, whatever that's crushing you, whatever that's drowning you, whatever that's causing you to grasp for air, only be pulled back down again, you got to accept God's rescue plan. You must take part in the rescue plan of God that Jehovah Shammah here, that God says, I am here. And he says, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For most of us, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for rest from worry, 
worry and fear and the unknown. That's where you're looking for rest from. Many of us, the unknown, the worry, the, 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 the mental anguish that we go through when we can't sleep at night or, or up early and up late, that the mind is constantly running, and that's one thing we can't shut off. You're, you, you're constantly trying to process information. How am I going to pay this bill? How am I going to do that? I'm worried about my daughter. I'm worried about my son. I'm, I'm worried about my husband. I'm worried about my wife. Worry, worry, worry. Your mind, you're trying to sleep. You're twisting and you're turning. You, you're not getting proper rest. It's affecting you in your day work. And God says, bring it unto me. Jesus says, bring it to me. Give it to me. But when you give it to him, don't take it back. I want to paint the picture here of, of an ox. Now, I'm, I'm a city boy. I'm a city boy there, Brother Curtis, and I, I don't know a whole lot about agriculture. But I do understand that when you talk about the yoke, when you think about an ox, I know you all like oxtails and all other kind of stuff right there. I know, I know I got some Caribbeans in the house. I know how that works. But when you think about an ox that has a yoke around their collar, a rope around their neck, it's usually wooden. And you see two oxen, they have a yoke or a wooden stock around the two of them. And Jesus says, my yoke is easy. Jesus, he's taking the brunt of the responsibility. Two oxen are put in a field to plow it. And Jesus says, learn of me. He says, let me take the lead. But I want you to do is to understand this, is that although I'm taking the lead, you're along for the ride. You're in partnership with God. Jesus is saying, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. You don't have to plow this field on your own. But something that looks odd, you may say, well, you would never see an ox and a pig yoked together. That don't work. That's not a partnership. But look what he does. He says, learn of me. He's now saying, I want you to consider yourself equal with me. Because you are partnered with me, but you don't have to take the brunt of the way. That's the love of God. He says, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That we must get on board, we must get yoked up, locked up, stocked up with God and get into the field. Somebody say, get in the field. Mm -hmm. And so there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Because you're yoked up with him. Think about that for a second. So you might think that you don't qualify, but he now says, look, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. That if you're yoked up with him, that means that there's no issues. God, he, ah, I want you, if I can just carve open your skull and pour into it just to know that you have a partnership with God. God loves you so much that he's allowing you to partner with him in his plan of reconciliation for all of mankind. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, watch this, watch this. I, I want you to see this. And say this with me. I am in the vineyard of the Lord. I'm a co-laborer, a partner with God and his plan of redemption. To God. That's no other religion on the planet allows you to partner with God. Jesus, the Christ of God, because He created everything, because our reconciliation back to him is through him and for him and by him he loves us so much that he allows us to partner up with him to be yoked up with him that's how much that he loves us he's not in the back seat he's in the front seat with you that you can do all things through christ with strength in you glory to god hallelujah listen um uh, author miles monroe he said this he said for everything that god desires to do in the earth he enters into partnership with those to whom he has already given dominion. That was by Miles Monroe. 
uh, Tony Sorsen said this is, you aren't in true partnership with him until you have given him what he would never take from you, your will. As awesome as God is, he will never, ever force his will on you. We're all here today because uh, I, I, I became born again. I, I chose the Lord. Yeah, I, I know there were some things that was going on. I need to get my life together. And so I chose God. No, you didn't. You and your sanctified self. You, you did not choose him. The scripture says that he chose you. He first loved you. It goes back to the earlier scriptures that we're talking about how in eternity's past that God has already preordained, already foreordained everything that's going to happen. He already knows it. And he's causing us to be a partner with him. And because we're a partner with him, we can trust him. How many of us can trust God today? Glory to God. Paul's emphasis was that we're to forget the past, that we're to forget what was behind us and strain towards what was ahead. And don't allow yesterday's failures to keep us from our upward calling in God. And again, I said there's no condemnation for those that are in Christ. Listen, listen key words is this, in Christ. Condemnation applies to those who are not in Christ. Now, this is not a license for us to go out and do whatever we want to do, what we want to do, and why we want to do it. No, that doesn't give us a license to sin, but what it does, it allows us to see the unmerited favor of God upon our lives. Glory to God. Can you say amen? amen. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17. You're familiar with it already. I know some know it by heart. Verse 17 through 19. Now, if anyone is enfolded in Christ, he has become an entirely new creation. All that is related to the old order has vanished. Behold, everything is fresh and new. And God has made all things new and reconciled us to himself, given us the ministry of reconciling others to God. It, it's, scripture says that if any man be in Christ, and, and this is how the Lord kind of showed me, he says, in Christ, it's like in a burrito. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Christ, he's the flatbread. You follow me? And you are the lettuce and the chopped up tomatoes and the avocado and all the other things you like to put in your taco and, and or in your burrito. And what he does, he says, if we're in him, he folds us and then rolls us up that we're in him. And so when challenges come, we, they, they, then when people see that they, they, don't, they don't see us, they can only see him. We, we're rolled up. We're rolled up. We're in Christ. Glory to God. All of your issues, your, your, your attitudes, and all of your, 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 your little issues are all rolled up in him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The world system it, it may not agree with what God says. Justice will want to have her way, but grace is needed. Grace is needed for us to intercede for the wrongs that we've done. Let, 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 me, let me make that a little more clear. You can be as saved and as sanctified as you want to be, but if you go out here and let's say you get into an accident and a person is a fatality, Justice says, you, you, you got to pay the piper. But we need the grace of God. Again, what we have to understand is that just because we're born again, just because we're in Christ, that does not give us a license to go out here and do whatever we want to do. There are consequences to when we do things. But we are in Christ. Because that we're in Christ, let's make sure we stay in Christ. Amen? So let's make sure we stay in the burrito. Stay rolled up in here. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. So as a partner with God, what's my assignment? What's, what's, what am I supposed to do, Pastor? If I heard all that, that all sounds great, that's good. But what's my job? What's my assignment? What's required of me now that I've been reconciled unto him? If God has already done his part, and he has, what's my job? Turn to Matthew chapter 28. 
last scripture. In Matthew chapter 28, in verse, uh, let's look at verse, I want you to look at verse 18, but I'm going to read prior to that. In the scriptures, it says, meanwhile, the 11 disciples heard the wonderful news from the women and left for Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had arranged to meet them. The moment they saw him, they worshiped him, but some still had lingering doubts. Verse 18 is on the screen. Then Jesus came close to them and said, I want you to read that with me. All the authority of the universe has been given to me. Now go in my authority and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to faithfully follow all that I have commanded you, and never forget that I am with you every day, even to the completion of this age. Our assignment, child of God, is to go out and to make disciples of them. That we're causing people to come into the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's our assignment. We've been reconciled unto God. We've been partnered with God to carry out, help carry out his plan of, of redemption for humanity. By his love. Now you may say, well, I don't know all of the Bible. I don't know all of that stuff. I don't know all the right words to say, Pastor. And that's fine. But you know enough to believe. Everybody in the room should be able to witness to somebody. You say, well, I don't know all the scriptures. I don't know. Wait, wait. You know enough to become born again. Say what you know. Say what you know. We have to change our thinking. Uh, this, there must be a, a, a paradigm shift. In, in other words, we are, God is not basing his decision or what he's going to do based on what you and I are going to do. That's not how it works. That, that, that's not how it works. How it works is that we're to base our lives on what we're going to do based on what he's already done. Does that make sense? So the shift in here is I've got to stop thinking like God thinks. He says, now proceed. Have you perceived yet? Come on, stand to your feet. It is our desire that you begin to see as God sees, that you begin to think like God thinks, that you begin to perceive like God perceives. Now all of us here, we got both eyes open, right? So that means his perspective and your perspective, they now come into alignment. Right? You got that? Every head bowed. Every eye closed. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. I thank you for the hearing. But I also thank you for not only those that hear, but those that would do your word. We pray, Father, that something was said or done to them to give us a better understanding of who we are in you. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the proper perspective that we're able to see clearly why it is that you've reconciled us unto yourself that we can go forward and operate in this great commission of making disciples of men, causing them to come into the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Will you say this prayer with me? Dear Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner, and I need to be born again. I may have become estranged from you and your word. I want to rededicate my life back to you. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. And I believe unto my heart this righteousness that you caused Jesus to come to the earth, to die on the cross, to be buried in a grave, and to be raised from the dead, and to be seated at your right hand. 
You forgave me of all of my sins. Past, present, and future. I want to live this life on your terms. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. I believe you pray that prayer of faith. Amen. Again, if your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and it is that simple. Come on, lift your hands before the Lord. Father, I pray for the people of God today that we would go out and to do what we've heard. Because now that we have the proper perception of why you've called us to such a great calling in the earth, make our pathway straight. Allow us to see as you see. Allow us to hear as you hear. Allow us to have a heart like you have. That we will share the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. That will cause thousands upon thousands and millions upon millions of people to come into the kingdom of God. For that we give you praise. We pray, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, the people of God. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in heaven, even as your soul prospers. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Remember that the harvest is truly right.